Though it is very hard to believe, but nearly 20 years ago, in the lead up to the launch of Legend of Zelda Wind Waker on the GameCube, Nintendo surprised us Zelda fans with a four in one collector's edition Legend of Zelda title. It is a promotional disc and it is comprised of four different games that are the classic Legend of Zelda from the NES, Zelda 2 Link's Adventure from the NES, Ocarina of Time from N64, and Majora's Mask from N64. And in today's video, I want to walk down memory lane, boot up some of these games together, and discuss how it really turned the GameCube into a Zelda machine, and even have some discussion on what we can hope to see hit the Nintendo Switch to create the same effect going forward. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we are going through memory lane together today. I am going to be very nostalgic for this video as I have not booted up this game in years and years, or this actual collection disc, rather. And just the title menu screen, seeing the 20 minute playable demo of Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, this was really the height of what got me into the Zelda. Zelda series in terms of being a hardcore player and going through all the games as I bought a GameCube with Wind Waker and with Double Dash, my two games that I owned out of the gate with the GameCube. And somehow I got this, I think at a game exchange, which was a local like GameStop type of competitor around me at the time. And I, I stumbled upon this disc and this was a game changer for me because of course I had already played through Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask back on the N64, but a very bad habit I formed back in the day was just trading in all my stuff every time a new system and new games would come out because that was the way I could get the new console at a reasonable price and get some new games for the new console. So at that point in time, I traded in all my old stuff to get the new stuff and it left me in a place where I couldn't go back and easily play the old games again. So when I saw Ocarina of Time on this collection disc, it was a must own and of course I purchased it. And it just really created, you know, I, what I would say is some of the best hours of gameplay on the GameCube for me and my age at that time. I, it was a perfect experience. I definitely enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I do want to boot up some of these games briefly and kind of talk through them with you guys and kind of just share how big of a deal this was um, when it came out. I, we have the memory card in here. Let's make sure. So one of two things happened here. Either I lost some saved memory along the way because it's been so long since I've actually used that memory card or it's just not the same memory card that I thought had the Zelda data on here. But regardless, I don't know if you guys let me know in the comments if you change a battery on a GameCube memory card, does that erase all the data on there? Because that's definitely something that I, I hope I still have all these files that were tied to uh, the collector edition because, you know, the, as I mentioned, this is where I put a lot of my hours in is into Zelda experiences for the first time, really playing through the NES Zelda for the first time because I did not own an NES originally. My very first console was the Super NES. Uh, that was a gift from my grandma who actually got it for us. And, you know, that's where my gaming journey really began. Then I had, you know, an aunt or uncle uh, that they had the NES at their house. And I would sometimes play it there, but in it, you know, I never got into Zelda games back then. I didn't even know what a Zelda game was back then. So really until Ocarina of Time, I had no interest in the series and didn't know what I was missing out on. So a game like this that really turned, uh, you know, the GameCube into a Zelda machine was a very big deal because, you know, of course, the hype for Wind Waker was at an all time high. I actually, as I mentioned, found this after I had completed the Wind Waker. Uh, so that was one thing that was a little bit different for me because, I, you know, what's the point of a 20 minute demo uh, whenever you've already played and completed the game? But one thing that was really cool about it, and I'm about to get uh, completely, I'm going to die here if I'm not careful. Uh, one thing that was really cool about it was the fact that it allowed you to play those N64 era games and the NES era games as part of the collection pack. Uh, and, you know, the thing about this first Zelda game is it's very hardcore. There's no direction. You're literally talking about it being dropped in an open world and just trying to figure things out as you go. That's what this game is. And uh, I remember having to, I think it was, I, I would try not to look things up, but what I would do occasionally is I would go to um, the library because, of course, high-speed internet was like, not a thing back then and I was on I mean it was a thing but not where I was at we had dial up at the time so when I actually got to high speed internet at something like the library I would go there and I would print off an entire like uh, Zelda Zelda dungeon or one of those uh, you know white walkthrough guide websites and I'd print out all of the, the the pages from the website on the walkthrough just to figure out where some of the secrets were in this game because to be fair I mean you have to 
you have to really go out of your way to figure out some of the puzzles. Now, of course, the NPCs kind of tell you little hints and things, but when you're pretty young and you're starting out in gaming for the first time, you don't always know to look for those intricacies when you're talking to the NPCs. So definitely to this day, still recommend playing through Legend of Zelda. Like it is the, the first step in the in creating the formula, but it has incredible puzzles. It has dungeons. It has what you want from a Zelda game you know, fast action, just definitely a different, um, you know, perspective, but that kind of 2D perspective Zelda, which we'll talk about the perspective changing in the next Zelda game in a second here with Adventure of Link. But yeah, definitely one that I was glad was av available on the GameCube. This game being released on the GameCube really did make it a Zelda machine, because if you guys aren't familiar, we also got the Game Boy Player attachment for the GameCube, which would allow you to play any of the handheld Zeldas. So that's how I experienced everything in terms of you know a link's awakening for the first time uh and then going through and experiencing uh all of the the gba the got distracted there and died but the gba uh the gba games meaning like the minish cap i played through for the first time on the game boy player um and then even the oracle games from the game boy color like I, that was how i experienced all those handheld zeldas and similar to how we have like the emulation run through nso you have where you, you can't do rewinds or save or uh, save states or anything like that but you can go back to the main menu by pressing the z button at any time on the gamecube controller um and then we'll we'll quickly hop into um well actually there's a really cool video here like a video pack package that's on this collector collector's edition as well and we won't play through that just because it's it's just a video but uh it's actually really cool because it walks you through the history of the zelda games and this was just such a cool thing to get you caught up in current with some marquee titles in the series so far if you were you know back in 2003 getting ready for uh getting ready for the release of wind waker and now this one i would say is probably one of the more controversial zelda games just for the simple fact that it is a 2d side-scrolling zelda uh, it really feels like a departure from a traditional Zelda. Uh, we won't worry about the whole the whole name here. We'll just go ahead and put in Sun instead of Sun Bros, just for an interest of time. Oh, well, hang on here. There we go. I got to press Y to get down to end. Of course, that makes a ton of sense. But this one is notorious for being extremely difficult. And again, one that you no story, no nothing. You just start off and you are Link, and then you go to this very interesting overworld map where numerous enemies can come out and attack you. I think it's specifically triggered by when you step on that grass. Um, and you know, there's, there. so the the last boss of this game, if I'm not, mis if I'm not mistaken, is like Dark Link, um, legitimately hard. I know there's uh, there's probably ways, I'm sure there is ways, I think I've seen ways of people that, that kind of like cheese them online and make it significantly easier. But whenever you're just talking about doing that battle straight up, it is no joke. I was stuck on this game for, I don't know how many years before I finally beat it. Um, and I would just push it off like playing it again. I would, I didn't want anything to do with it. Definitely not my favorite Zelda title. And I think it's definitely one of the, you know, like if towards the bottom of fan favorite Zeldas for sure. You do of course have like the interesting jump mechanic for Link here. That's not common unless if you have like a feather in a 2D, you know, Zelda game, but we never see side scrolling sections like this. And then you kind of just have the transition into the overworld when you leave a town or when you leave certain dungeons and things. And my, my thought on this game is just once I beat it, I never really wanted to come back and play it again. I, I'm sorry if there's fans out there of, of Zelda 2 Adventure Link, but I think there's a reason they never really went back to this formula and uh, it's, it was probably for the best, in my opinion. But still a Zelda game nonetheless. If you're a true Zelda completionist, you want to say you've beaten all the Zelda games, you might have to boot that one up at some point in time. Uh, let's quickly boot up the Zelda Ocarina of Time uh, game together. And of course, we had Rumble on the GameCube controller, which was really nice. I liked the way that the buttons map to the GameCube controller. And this is the game that I think I played more Ocarina of Time hours in than anything else, as again, it was just one of those things where it was the perfect time. It looked a little bit sharper than what was on the N64. And I want to say upward, upwards of 20 plus times more than likely 100%ing Zelda Ocarina of Time on the GameCube specifically besides the runs that I did on the N64. Uh, so we'll definitely hop into just a little bit of gameplay of this. Now, one thing I'm noticing about the GameCube version here that I actually forgot until I booted it up again here is the fact that they they mixed around the color buttons in the top to add, or the color of the buttons rather at the top to actually reflect the GameCube controller layout. And now that I'm you know most used to the NSO version that I've been playing through recently, it's just kind of funny to see that as you would have had the B button would have been green and then the A button would be the blue. And they just made the, the colors, of course, match the layout of the GameCube controller, which does make sense to do. And that's what they should have done. But 
but it's just a, a funny little uh you know rec recognition thing that i realized that whenever i was playing through this and you can definitely see i will say one thing as much as i was talking trash in the nso version originally and rightfully so because it didn't release in a good state but i've since corrected my statement on that because of how much nintendo has upgraded it reduced the input lag and actually you know made all of the textures and fog effects and things look better but you can definitely see all the pixels rendered here or at least they're a lot more intense than they really did clean up these roms on the nso uh, version of the game which is great to see and i can definitely notice too for all the people who thought i was crazy when i was saying that there's input lag on the original version of nso it was there and i can tell you that it like the responsiveness of this gamecube controller makes a huge difference and this is how i was remembering it playing when you do things like lock on target and you turn real quick you don't notice any kind of input delay now to be clear on the nso since they've done the updates it's the same thing i think it's just as quality of an experience as this but when it launched let me tell you i knew for sure that that game was not was not how it should have been uh, and something was off with the input delay and sure enough they have you know since addressed that by all accounts so this was a great way to experience Ocarina of Time. It also occurred to me that they had, of course, also released this game with the Master Quest bundle on the GameCube as well. So, you know, when us Zelda fans are really wanting something for the 30th, uh, 35th anniversary and they, were, they did all that stuff for Mario, it's like there's a reason there's an expectation for that. You know, a lot of times back in the day, we would see Zelda games re-released in multiple ways. Just a, a nice bundle pack, you know, oh, you can't play Ocarina of Time on the GameCube. So here, let us give you multiple ways uh, to play it in a promotional disc. And that's really one thing Nintendo just needs to do going forward. And to quickly discuss that, you know, that's one thing I hope that at some point in time, uh, they, they look at the DS catalog of games and, and recognize that we can't play those on the Nintendo Switch. And while it does take work for sure, and they would have to either come up with a touchscreen mechanic to emulate it, uh, whether that be through a phone or a dedicated controller, whatever they want to do, yes, that, that part would be hard to figure out for sure. Uh, or if they do something as aggressive as create another tier of Nintendo Switch Online and include DS games and they're, they're revised with current controls. Uh, I didn't equip my shield here yet. You know, my point, though, is like there's great Zelda games that are locked to the DS now, uh, you know, such as A Link Between Worlds, which is a true classic, in my opinion, and definitely a Zelda game that every fan needs to go and experience. And I wish I could tell them that they could go experience that on the Switch somehow. Um, and that's just not the case, not to mention in the first DS, of course, we have Phantom Hourglass uh, and Spirit Tracks, which you can actually uh, you can actually emulate those games through the Wii U because of that touch mechanic. So that's probably the best way to do it right now. Um, but all, all of that said, you know, and this is a good example of the pixelation here is Link looks extremely pixelated. I think that comes through on on capture pretty well as uh, also. But yeah, Link looked very pixelated there compared to how he does in the NSO. But I certainly hope that we see whether it be more collection packs like this or whether it be something where we do get ways to emulate 3DS and DS games eventually somehow on the Switch, however they want to do it. I'm cool with it. I just think that Nintendo shouldn't lose their way in how they used to give us the ability to replay classic games on the new platforms because people end up playing the new platforms. It's the same way that I was mentioning my my GameCube memory card may be done for or just doesn't have the data that I expected it to have on there. Like I haven't booted up the GameCube in years, you know, and and uh, and the, that goes for the Wii as well. That just goes for the Wii U other than for recent videos. And so that's just one of the things that happens over time. And as a fan that wants to be able to have access to go play the classic games they grew up with, this is something we need to see happen. And while I'm not the biggest fan of subscription services out there, if Nintendo continues to build NSO and makes it worth it and makes it a viable way for a reasonable price to go back and play all the classic Zeldas on one console, that's more than fine by me. But we'll cut the video here, guys. It was definitely a fun little look through at this classic uh, Zelda Collector's Edition game that, uh, which by the way, if you do want to pick this up online, definitely still available, uh, just more on the pricey side nowadays. Uh, of course, I looked up on eBay and it, it looks like the cheapest you're going to maybe get it is, and this one I do have with the uh, the the actual um, book booklet inside that we used to get, and now we still have the clips for, but of course we don't get anything. And then like a little subscribe to um, Nintendo Power and receive a free player's guide, which I still miss Nintendo Power also, but 
Uh, yeah, you can still track these things out on eBay. It looked like for as low as 80 bucks, uh, maybe in some cases cheaper than that, especially if it's like disc only. But for box, I saw a lot of $80 all the way up to 100 for really good condition ones. So one of those things I hope we see, you know, Nintendo give us a Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D from the DS era, but port it over to the Nintendo Switch and up res. Like, I want more collection packs like this. I think they're really cool to hold on to over the course of time, but I want to see ways to play all of these classic games on the modern platforms going forward so at this point in the video guys i want to hear from you personally on all your thoughts and opinions your nostalgia for this game did you have the same collector's edition growing up where you had the ability to play these games on the gamecube or did you just experience them on the original nes or n64 like definitely share your own memories on these with me in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic Make sure you check out yesterday's video if you haven't already, where we have a broad discussion around subscription services and gaming and Sony launching their Game Pass competitor around the corner, Rockstar doing a GTA Plus subscription plan, and what this really means for the broader landscape of games in 2022 and beyond. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.